is going on everyone this is irockths here back again with another video in the uh, model tutorial series um or it's been so long since i actually recorded th this series um i actually have to look up to remember what i called it really fast uh it is the um building a perfect team model series building a perfect team model uh series so welcome back to that Building a perfect team model series. I started this in PT24. Um, I hate editing so much, I never finished it. Yeah, so it is, the last video is on pitching. And I am going to finish it in 25 because I have no interest at this point in going back to 24. Um, and I think with 25 out, we're uh, closing in on two months into PT25. It'll be out for two months by the time I finish this easily. It'll be more helpful for me to talk about it in PT25. Um, there are some changes in PT25 from PT24 um, that uh, I do want to address um, that do go back to the modeling a little bit. Um, one of them, yeah, I, I reinstalled the game today, so I have to recreate all my views um, before I export again because I wanted to install it on my uh, SSD. But if you go into here and you go into report, uh, you can hit, click a write report to CSV and it'll write the report here. Uh, the problem is, if you are not in a league, it overwrites this for every tournament you're in. So you can see here at the beginning it says gold 310, G310, which stands, which equates back to this up here. It doesn't include a tournament ID or like the default tournament ID or the ID that it shows. So it doesn't, it doesn't include either this iron B05 T16 2624, or this 7032624 at the beginning. It just says statistics and whatnot, and I'll show you here. And here you can see it just says statistics, sortable statistics, um, and then whatever your view is on the end. So I want to do really, really quick exports and pulls and copy and paste into the new, into the Excel file, and this doesn't really enable that any better than just copy and pasting from the HTML report. That is the main big difference uh, between PT23 and PT24 that we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about a couple others really quickly at the front here, since this is my first in PT25, and they are combinators and team chemistry. Uh, getting team chemistry out of the way first, it does have an impact. I don't think there's a really good way to quantify it, so as of right now, I'm not even considering it. Combinators is something I am going to have to consider going forward. I haven't considered it so far, but... Um, I am going to start considering it, but if you're not familiar with combinators, um, they are essentially, uh, you get a card, you get a chance every time you open a historical card that the card is a combinator series card, and it's any historical that's not a mission edition or limited edition, I believe. There might be some other exceptions, but, and you can, uh, add in a ton of other historical, uh, historical cards, or even some live cards for higher level live cards. Uh, that can help uh, eventually boost the ratings of the card. I'm going to start taking combinators out of my data sets going forward because they do have those boosted ratings and they are starting to become really popular. Uh, but I won't be going over them them at all in the model, uh, the modeling series. Kind of difficult to do pro uh, programmatically right now. I'm not sure if there's a formula for how much they boost by. If there is, then I could do it pretty programmatically. Um, but but I also don't want to put every single card with a combinator in there because that's multiplying the number of cards in the game by I think either five times or six times, so I don't want to add them uh, overall. But I will um, I will start removing them from the data I am gathering just because uh, I sort everything up by card ID and the combinators have the same card ID. They don't have separate card IDs. So uh, I did a pitching episode previously. I'm going to go over pitching a little bit again. Um, I haven't really changed too much. I was looking at changing my pitching this year, um, and I have changed around some of my formulas to correct some errors, but the methodology is the same. I'm going to go over some of my later uh, pitching formulas that get later in the, the final calculations because I think those have changed, especially in the base running ba or the base run formula for pitchers but I'm not going to go over uh, every individual change in the main uh, ratings, like for like finding I and that kind of thing. That really hasn't changed. Uh, here you can see I've got a double breakpoint analysis on pitching uh, control on walk rate for pitching this time. Um, and, and as you can, you can see here, 
there is a couple of different breakpoints on here. Uh, so down here you have the really low control guys, and 50 might not be the best breakpoint for that, but as far as I can tell, the breakpoints are generally 50 and 100. Uh, but if I don't have a good data set for that, that's not what I'm going to use. And I don't think it's necessarily as simple as that this year. The breakpoint analysis does not line up with that right now, at least in iron. Uh, but yeah, you have your really low control guys down here. Uh, if you have below 20 control, it's unplayable. Honestly, if you have below 50 control, I really don't want to mess with that this year. This 15% walk rate is unusable uh, most of the time this year. Um, that's just the way the meta is this year. But I'm, I'm kind of disappointed by that. There's not too many pitchers to sustain a 20% walk rate for a long period of time. Um, but that's just the way it's working out this year. Uh, also, the reason at this point, I really like using those low control guys, turning down pitch around and letting them go absolutely nuts. And then, yeah, it, it kind of, um, it's really hard to tell as well because not too many people are playing pitchers out here. People have kind of figured out the meta, and that's one of the issues with having to pull a sample from tournaments is it's not a true random sample, right? Most people are going to construct very similar rosters, especially in uh, daily and weekly tournaments. You're going to see a ton of similar rosters. That means that those cards that are outliers in a bad way don't get their card in here. Um, but also cards that are outliers in a good way. So someone that uh, I think it's, uh, who is it who has the stupid I rating? I think it's Goat Anderson has like 140 I. Yeah, this Goat, Anderson, uh, this Goat Anderson card has 128 eyes. I'm sorry, I confused it. It has 128 I. You've got some of these outliers, but the cards aren't good enough outside of those outliers to play. I don't think this this Jensen might play in cap formats because he's a 40 overall, and the bat's not terrible for 40 overall, but the card's not that great. You're not going to use him in a main iron tournament. Uh, that's for sure. So a lot of these cards, you know when they're heavily stacking that avoid Ks, it's very hard to get them playing in. It's very hard to get copies of them playing to actually get data on. Because it's not a true it's not a true random sample in that regard. Um, but also you can kind of see a another breakpoint kind of here around a hundred ish. Good control is really good this year. Um, and if you look at the best pitchers, um, a lot of them have really good control. Um, you know, this Sherry Smith has 108, Brent Anderson has 81, 85 on their e-bones, Bob Forsh 92, Bob Bruce 115, uh, Tasuiji, very, very happy, if you ever watch this video, he's gonna be very happy that two Bobs are in the top five. Um, so strikeout rate, uh, very similar splits, uh, we'll plot that again as well. It's very noisy near the top because there's not a ton of pitchers with a ton of stuff playing right now. Um, a lot of this is people playing off previous year information, which is not incorrect. That's how I started the year. Uh, but the low stuff guys are really good this year. Um, you can see there's a pitcher here that's pitching with well under 20 stuff. I'm guessing that's the uh, Cornejo card. Yes, the Cornejo card has 10 stuff. This Cornejo card's actually pretty good for caps, by the way. It might be better than, better than decent in non-caps. The way the game has changed this year, it does not it does not benefit to have as much stuff this year as it has in past years. Every rating is valuable, but there's a couple that matter more than anything else. Stuff's a nice bonus feature. If you got the other two, stuff's a really good differentiator, and you can really see that with this Bill Campbell card. Um, or actually, the best reliever in iron is the new Luke Jackson. Uh, this is the best reliever in iron right now, so... Um, the primary thing he has is he doesn't allow a ton of home runs, and he doesn't walk a ton. But he's got hundred and one he's got hundred and three stuff. And so if he doesn't have that home run allowed and he doesn't have that control, he's not gonna be that he's not gonna be that good. Um the P Babip is not being good and this card still being good is very different this year than it was uh in 2020 uh in PT24. Uh they intentionally changed P Babip and Babip to matter less in uh PT25. But essentially now you kind of need either good P BABIP or good stuff like this, or you need solid P BABIP and stuff to be successful. 60 stuff I wouldn't recall really good, but apparently it's enough to make up for that 43 P BABIP down here, even with 75 uh, PHR and 78 control. Shows what I know of my own model. Uh, next up we look at the, um, oh, I need to change this really fast. 
I mess this up. So this is going to have a bit of an impact. I did have an error in there. I found a lot of errors this year so far. I recently updated the the model over the weekend. And uh, one of the things that changed was this home run uh, uh, check. And it went from uh, a break point at 80 to a break point at 75. And so I changed the 75 here and I changed the 75 here and I didn't change the 75 here because of that it was giving too much credit to guys who had more than 75 home run allowed. Bad up here, um, this is one of the big changes I made in the tutorial series. I said uh, BABIP is always linear, and that is absolutely not the case this year. We'll talk about this much more with the batter segment. BABIP is no longer a linear equation, and there's still a point where the PBABIP is not giving as much this year. Um, in past years, you could kind of figure that there wasn't really a break point, and it was pretty linear last year. In past years, I mean last year. Um, so I put a, an upper cap on it. Um, that's not as interesting here. Well, not an upper cap. I put a break point there at the at the top end for BABIP, but uh, the the batter BABIP is really the interesting one. Um, and then extra base hits and all of that for um, triple for uh, pitchers. That is all still done uh, using this weights sheet for the average uh, triple rate and uh, extra base hit rate. Now we get over to the uh, base runs uh, board. So the big thing I changed was base run, uh, base runs B is what I changed, and I will pull up. This is what I get my. Um, this is where I get my formula from. Uh, it's from Tom Tango, which I still need to finish the book. I'm using basically this one. I don't think it's even modified anymore. I think maybe I modified it to like include hit by pitches or something like that. I'll have to check. Really, actually, the big change would be I would I am removing intentional walks. But the big thing that um, I needed to change was this total base equivalency. Uh, for some reason, I had decided to basically turn that into slugging percentage when it's not slugging percentage at all. Um, you can see here it's... Uh, 1.4 times singles plus doubles plus triples, and then four times home runs, and then that's all summed together in one um equate in one parentheses uh here the red parentheses uh set here, then subtract out 6, 0.6 times hits. Um, I did add in 0.1 times the walks and hit by pitches, the home run subtractions there at the end because I added that last. Um, so that's the subtracting three times home runs, and then multiply all that by 1.1. And even then, I still didn't do it, right? <laughs> Finding all sorts of errors in the model this year. Um, and this, again, goes back to the I changed base runs a long time ago and don't know why, and I don't know where I made all my mistakes. All right, there we go. I went ahead and updated it really fast and scrolled down here. The changes didn't change all that much, or the ratings didn't change all that much. I expected it would change more, but it didn't really change all that much. So now we're getting over to raw base runners, um, and then there's no changes to C or A really. Now we got our raw base run per nine, uh, base running. Uh, divide the raw base runs by the uh, weights here. So for the weights, we come over here. It is uh, base run adjustment is just base runs divided by runs allowed. Because there's more base runs than runs allowed, so we want to scale that down to how many of those base runs actually turn into runs. Then we have innings pitched, which is just 500 minus all outcomes that are not outs. So 500 minus every time a batter reaches base divided by 3. Um, and slightly different V right and V left. Uh, normally I would just calculate the overall, but I do kind of need this to calculate um, special uh, calculate relievers. Expected run allowed is just uh, the runs allowed based on their base runs. And then uh, above average is controlling that back to uh, M7 is the uh, league ERA. So that's adjusting it back to ERA numbers. Um, the ERA? No, that's uh, runs allowed. So that's adjusting it back to um, 
or once again, that's adjusting it back to the actual allowed runs. Thinking is hard. I haven't actually looked through these formulas in so long that I don't remember how I built them. Um, so that is the uh, number of runs they allow above average. Uh, in reality, for pitchers, it's runs allowed below average, but we're considering their run value as positive when they allow fewer runs. So in this case, we're calling it above average, so it's on the same terminology as the batters. Uh, how many more runs they are worth than the uh, average pitcher. Um, and then we have our innings per game, which is, um, that is a straight formula this year. Uh, there's no breakpoint analysis on that or anything like that. Having to do something like this, this is the only way I can think of to actually take stamina into consideration. And we do need to take stamina into consideration just to have some way to account for pitchers who pitch deeper into games. And then uh, wins per game above average. That is what we turn into. Uh, wins above average. Um, and again, uh, really the only weird thing on this version of the model is I have a rank RP star here at the end that is... Right, that is relief pitchers rank taking out the top five starters, uh, just in case. Uh, most people want to use the top five starters if they can, so they don't want to see them populating the top five of the relief pitcher numbers, uh, or even the top twenty or so of the relief pitcher numbers. Um, not that the uh, in past years the top five starting pitchers would also show up a lot of times to the top five relief pitchers. That is not the case this year. Relief pitchers are really getting the numbers to make them compete with starting pitchers. Uh, that is. Pretty much everything I need to do with pitching. Um, so uh, I will hope to have this uh, edited here in a few days or hours or eh, maybe later today on the 8th. I'll get this up. Um, and then uh, depending on how many other things go on, I'll try and get uh, something up for hitters and fielding uh, later uh, within the next week or two as well. Um, so... Uh, I do need to go over those a little more in depth, which is going to be irritating, but, um, not irritating, but it is going to take longer for those videos to edit, and it's going to, uh, take longer to record those videos, because I need to go over them from the beginning, rather than this, where I could kind of skip around a lot. Other than that, I will see you all in the next video, and you can always, uh, stop by my Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash irockths. I play, uh, out of the park. Uh, on there all the time where I'm talking about where sometimes I'm opening packs for perfect teams sometimes I'm just talking about uh, tournaments and league play sometimes I'm talking about and playing the franchise mode I've got a royal save and a historical save this year um, that I've been playing on stream so we talk about quite a few things uh, on stream and uh, not like I never talk about perfect team when I'm streaming a franchise mode either so uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the uh, in the next video. Bye.